Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam rasulullah. In the name of Allah, and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his last and final messenger as to what follows. Family, friends, foes, haters and haters, welcome back to the features. I greet you all with love and serenity, no hatred in my heart. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and the blessings of Allah be upon all of you. So before we continue, please like, please share, please subscribe. Please hit me up on Patreon. As you know, we get a lot of haters up in here. A lot. So, uh, before I continue, there is a pretty high chance that certain people will probably try to get this particular video taken down or blocked or, you know, it's not going to be pretty. <laughs> Put it that way. So, I want to read the copyright disclaimer. Okay, so copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing nonprofit educational personal use tips, the balance in favor of fair use. So it will become apparent why I believe this as this video goes on. But anyways, do you remember this funny looking fella? He's got next. Anyways, in the first part of the series, I mentioned that just because someone might have said or done something racist, it doesn't necessarily make them a racist. They could have fell into racism for a number of reasons as human beings are complex and they can fall into things without even knowing or understanding they're falling into that thing so it could be a number of reasons like their upbringing stereotypes uh you know stereotypes caused because of media or due to media uh, cultural misunderstandings as i gave examples of that um and any any number of reasons could be you know so but anyways but to call someone an outright racist is not a light thing, and it requires a level of behavioral patterns before you just outright say, oh, he's a racist, you know. Furthermore, being called a racist has become such a major stigmatization because of the struggle of black people and them outright calling out real racists, okay? so. That's why real racists, they always talk about that they're not a racist, like Donald Trump, for example, who habitually says that he's the least racist person in the whole world. And, and he's, he's doing the most outlandish racist things at the same time. Ironically, his presidency made it cool for white supremacists to come out as racist. And they do so with impunity. But the main point is that to call someone a racist is, is, is not a light thing. Nobody likes to be called racist, even hardcore real racist. So I want to draw your attention to the series I did, Shut Up the Wajdi Akari uh, tragedy, in response to Wajdi Akari's you know, refutation of Abu Toba. And some of the comments that he made. And we're going to go back to this comment uh, several times, actually. Right? So I want to draw your attention to something that he said. Uh, Who in his right mind introduces and concludes videos with racial matters? You know what he's talking about here, family? You know, in the beginning of my introduction to these videos where, you know, you hear Malcolm X saying, Salam Alaikum, and, you know, the beginning and at the end of uh, the videos, at, in this particular series, I was using Malcolm X clips at the end of the of the videos. He's talking about Malcolm X, rahimahullah. Who in his right mind introduced and concludes videos with racial matters? He's speaking about Malcolm X. Now, mind you, I did not say anything at all about race until about the fourth 
uh, video of that series. He's the one who's making it about race specifically. But not only that, this man has the audacity to speak about Malcolm X and may Allah accept his shahada, you know, and uh, make his deeds heavy on, on his scale on Yom Qiyamah. I mean, may Allah have mercy on the Hajj of the Malik Shabazz. He's talking about him, okay? This is the guy you trust with teaching you about racism? Also, in the first video, some of my subscribers reacted to a blatant racist trope Wajdi said. And he actually had several in his reputation, Apple Tool, but I just put one out. Anyways, one of my subscribers reacted to the racist trope saying, Wajdi just exposed his ignorance and underlying prejudice. And Sajid had a response to the subscribing saying, a lot of people are exposing their underlying prejudice, not Wajdi though. Wow. Somebody gets Sajid a tutu and some pom-poms because that was some high level cheerleading. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Yeah, Wajdi. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not a professional cheerleader like Sajid, but I tried. Anyways, what is this underlying prejudice that Sajid says Wajdi doesn't have? These are his words. If he feels otherwise, please next time use different words so that I don't have to criticize and then you have to reply and we go back and forth playing ping pong. From the beginning, articulate and choose your words. I don't look at, please, if you understand English differently, then don't tell me this is American slang, African-American slang. Not only is it a racist trope, but it's one of the oldest racist tropes and very popular racist tropes that somebody can actually say. Said, boy, you give me a situation, you have to put me through a simple self examination. No, stupid. You mean a civil service examination. So at this point, you would think that after seeing your name attached to something like that, that you would apologize, correct? Because this is something that was clearly and blatantly racist, and I do believe that I proved my point. Is that what happened? Is that what happened? You see, I mentioned in part 4A of that same series that, uh, that I suspected that Wajdi's whole premise was race-based, but I couldn't prove it. So I intentionally put that part in there because I know that my foundational black subscribers would pick it up immediately and call him out for that, which was exactly the case here, as you plainly saw. And up until this day, neither Sajid or Wajdi, they've never retracted. So it's one thing not to retract something that was blatantly racist, just some in your face racism, okay? but. Again, it's not enough to accuse somebody of being racist because it could be some cultural insensitivity. And up until this day, I've never accused any of them of being racist. I never said that uh, Wajdi's a racist or Sajid's a racist, none of that, right? But it's a completely different thing if somebody just doubles down on their own racism then at that point, you just have less excuses to make for that person. And this is exactly what Wajdi did. And so they have an affiliation. And for example, when this Black Lives Matter issue came up with uh, you know, the, the incident in America and George Floyd, uh, you saw, we saw a lot of Muslims that we thought adhered to Islam. They reached the point where they prefer matters of race over, over matters of religion. <laughs> They reach the point where they prefer matters of race over, over matters of religion. The racial aspect took over uh, and compromised in their commitment to the way of the righteous predecessors, which was heartbreaking and, and very sad to see. So you make sure that these people are not on some you know, racist tip uh, where they're undermining other races, whether white people being racist against black people, or in many cases, in some cases, I would say, of course, it's more usually white against black. But in some cases, even black people being racist against white people as a retaliation for the racism that they had to suffer, the racism they had to suffer. And both are wrong. Both are wrong. Racism has no place in Islam. Islam is not a religion that promotes, promotes racism in any way, shape, or form. Um, I mean, if you want me to mention names, I don't know if you want me to mention names. Oh, please, Wajdi, please say names. Please say names. 
You know when people are moisture, you know when they be a little itchy? Is be a little itchy? Oh, I can mention names if you want. Features <laughs> What the heck? This guy spent two hours dogging Abu Toba. He is afraid to mention my name even once. And I'm gonna show you something else too. He, you know how he's saying that because black people are standing in solidarity with the George Floyd protest and that's racism. I'm gonna show you something. So Wajdi makes a list of all the duat that he knows. Mashallah, very popular guy. And you'll notice that, you know, he has Sheikh Tahir Wyatt, Sheikh Abu Sama, Sheikh Bina Phillips. But the main point is that the first name he mentions is Sheikh Tahir Wyatt. But I cannot think of anyone that I don't know on a personal level. Uh, Tahir Wyatt. And also that it's the first name on the list. And so they have an affiliation. And for example, when this Black Lives Matter issue came up with the, you know, the, the incident in America and George Floyd, uh, you saw, we saw a lot of Muslims that we thought uh, adhered to Islam. They reached the point where they prefer matters of race over, over matters of religion. Family, do I need to say anything else? Do I need to say anything else? If I was to stop the video right now, on this spot right here, that would be enough. Here you have Sheikh Tahir Wyatt out in the midst of the George Floyd protest giving a Jummah khutbah at City Hall in front of media and everything outside putting his race before the religion according to Wajdi Akari, being a racist. But not only Sheikh Tahir spoke about George Floyd, but also Sheikh Abu Usama spoke, Sheikh Bilal Phillips spoke, Sheikh Abdul Hakim spoke, Imam Suraj Wahaj spoke, Imam Khalid Yassin spoke, Sheikh Abu Toba spoke, even Mufti Munir spoke, even the brother Najib Angelisi, he spoke. Even though I'm critical of his circle for giving Nasser al-Hambali free range uh, to, just to talk about black people any old way that he wants to with his refutations and whatnot. I'm critical of that. Yes, and I mentioned this several times on my channel, but at least, at least he spoke in the defense of his people and I rate that, I respect that. Not a single one of them, not one, said that black people uniting was racism. Nor did a single one of them berate or humiliate the protesters, like this funny looking gremlin here, <laughs> okay? But you know who didn't speak until this very day, specifically about George Floyd? You know who didn't speak? I didn't speak. Imagine that, even though this is my niche, this is what I've been doing for the, over a year now, attacking white supremacy and racism head on, standing up for the voiceless black masses. I didn't speak. And you know why I didn't speak? Go well, check my channel right now. You won't find a single one of my videos, you know, with me speaking on George Floyd. You know why? Because all these giants came out and they spoke. Every last one of them. Those Imams are much more knowledgeable than I am. Most of them are older than me. All of them are foundational black Americans with the exception of Dr. Bilal Phillips. And I'm Canadian, so I'm not American. So what do I look like speaking on a topic that all these giants who are closer and more attached to the issue than I am? All of them have more knowledge than me Islamically and situationally. What do I look like putting myself in the realm of these titans? So out of respect, out of respect for the knowledge and the age of these du'at and scholars, I didn't speak. I put their speeches on my channel. I put the speech of uh, Imam Khalid Yassin on my channel. I shared the speech of Imam Shawaj Wahaj on my channel. 
how presumptuous of me would it be that all these behemoths are speaking on this topic that I put my two cents in it. But you know who thinks that their opinion matters? Watch the Akari and Nasser Hambali for that matter. Two non-black, non-American, never experienced life as a black person ever want to come and give themselves more importance to black issues than Abdullah Hakim Quick and Abu Osama and the rest of them. Mashallah. <laughs> you never find any of us telling Lebanese what they should do and what they shouldn't do. But wallahi, you always find these Arabs and Pakistanis sticking their nose into the business of black people, demanding that we never unite. Because if we unite, if we unite as black people, if we unite for our causes, it's racism in their eyes. So my question to Wajdi is, why didn't you call this racism? Protesters gathered in Martyrs Square around a gallows and a noose, symbols of their desire not just to topple, but to take revenge on Lebanon's political class. People are wild with anger, as if there isn't enough tinted glass after Tuesday's explosion. The protesters' weapons are the shovels and brooms they've been using to sweep up the rubble from the blast. The initial police response, tear gas. Shifting now to Beirut, a city broken, a city where the dead are being buried and anger is rising to the surface. Two days after a powerful explosion flattened whole neighborhoods, a collective effort to clean up the streets turned into a protest. People are fed up with government corruption, furious it appears negligence led to the explosion. Lebanese officials promised to investigate the cause, but few in Beirut seem to trust them. People want new leadership and an international investigation into the blast. That's the French president, Emmanuel Macron. He was in Beirut today to tour the destruction, and he was met with pleas for the world to help. Macron says he supports an independent probe into the blast, and he warns that without change, Lebanon could run out of food and fuel within months. Aren't those your people uniting in the streets, protesting together, bro? All up in the streets, Muslims, Christians, Rafi the Shia, atheists, all united, holding hand in hands with, with uh, Macron, that Muslim-hating French president? So you need to explain to us why the Lebanese to get, gathering together for united cause isn't racism, but black people coming together and uniting to fight our 460-year-old open enemy, why that's racism. What you need to do is you need to mind your own Lebanese bald-headed treasure troll, funny-looking remnant business, bro. So what's the, he ain't got no work or no smoke for people in his own culture, his own Lebanese people. He ain't got no energy to deal with them. All his energy and time is focused on black people because standing up for themselves is being on a racist tip. Meanwhile, this Pakistani truck artist paints George Floyd mural in his home. He's not on a racist tip. Somali Americans for George Floyd, they're not on a racist tip. Why Palestinians are marching for George Floyd, they, they ain't even on a racist tip. You see this Syrian man over here? And I want you guys to think about this for a second, okay? All the way in Syria, where it's bombed out and depleted, this man is taking the time to paint a mural of George Floyd. He, he's not on a racist tip. He's not putting race over religion. The only people in Wajdi's mind who are putting race over religion are black people. This George Floyd protest that Wajdi is saying is racist for black people to show solidarity with, this sparked international protest in Brazil, in Britain, Germany, Iran, Belgium, France, everywhere here in Canada, Italy, even Jews and Palestinians who can't even agree if water is wet, they both agreed George Floyd was injustice. And many more countries, many more countries that, you know, it's just going to take too long to mention. But all of them, all of them standing in solidarity against anti-black racism. 
But you know who can't stand up against anti-black racism? Black people. Because that would be putting race over religion. That would be compromising matters of race over the methodology of the Salaf. That would be, you know, a racist tip, undermin undermining other races. Family, this is just how retarded this dude is, okay? So George Floyd, okay? So George Floyd, the protest broke out in America and all over the world, right? Correct? Who were the majority of the protesters? I'm asking racially. What were the vast majority of these people protesting? Hmm? Were they black people? No. The vast majority, and I mean the vast majority of the protesters in America and abroad were white people. This buffoon is out here calling black people racist for standing up for black issues. Even white people are sick of white and tired of white supremacy. You'll find so many of them with a sharp disdain of white supremacy, not even afraid to express it and call it out. More and more are becoming very open about uh, about uh, white supremacy every single day. Even even they recognize it's evil, but not Wajdi. Wajdi, he can't see it. He's out here standing up for the oppressors and going after the oppressed. So you make sure that these people are not on some you know racist tip. Uh, where they're undermining other races, whether white people being racist against black people, or in many cases, in some cases, I would say, of course, it's more usually white against black, but in some cases, even black people being racist against white people as a retaliation for the races that they had to suffer, the races and they had to suffer, and both are wrong. No, it's not. It's intelligence and common sense. You know, you, know, you see when people don't know what they're talking about and they just open their mouth? Let me ask you something. Does anybody say to the Palestinians when they're getting buffed up by the Jews in Israel, does anybody tell them, oh, you can't hate them because that would be racism? Nobody tells them that. Nobody gives the oppressors an excuse unless it comes to black people. Even in the Quran itself, even in the Quran itself, Musa alayhi salam, when he was bringing his own people, Bani Israel, out of the land of the, of the Egyptians, another people, why didn't Allah tell Musa what Wajdi just said? Rather, the example for the people of Egypt was Asiya, the wife of Fir'aun. That was the example for his people, for the Egyptians. And just like Asiya was the example for those people, Asiya is an example for white people today. We don't give you a pass on oppression. We don't care who you are. Somebody reacting to the actions of an oppressor and ends up hating the oppressor, that is not racism. That's intelligence. That's common sense. This is practiced all over the world. Everybody knows this except for black people. Because we've been conditioned, and black people, you know what I'm talking about. We've been conditioned to love our masters. And that's why anybody that doesn't look like us, you give them more credence than people who do look like us. That's your conditioning. And he's perpetuating the same conditioning. You see, these people, they hate us because we are black and they are white. They see themselves as superior to us. That's how white supremacy works. That's how Arab supremacy works. That's why they feel that they can go into black lands and kidnap black people and enslave them, rape black women, and send them back home pregnant, like what's happening in the Arab world today. So if we hate white people or Arab people based upon oppression, then you need to explain to me how that hatred uh, against those people equates to racism. You're hating a people based upon the oppression they inflict on you, and you call it racism. When those are the ones who are actually practicing real racism. And our Akida and our Menhaj did not save us from white or Arab racism. Even if you want to go down the line, 
of blacks being racist to Arabs and white people, then how is it racist when it's warranted throughout history up until this very day? Ain't no Africans kidnapping and raping uh, Arab women, sending them home pregnant. Ain't no Africans uh, enslaving Arab men, torturing to them to death, forcing Arab women into prostitution. And can black people act upon racism? No. Blacks can't stop white people from uh, getting jobs. Blacks, blacks can't uh, toss a, a white man into jail for petty crimes for life. Blacks can't change laws for intentionally to lock out white people from any progress they make. Blacks can't attain uh, positions of power to prevent whites from, uh, you know, uniting or furthering their 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 uh, causes. Blacks can't shoot and kill white people in the streets like dogs without any consequence or punishment whatsoever. Fun fact. Never in history has a white woman ever accused a black man of abuse without the black man being killed or jailed or both, just by accusations. Can, can black women do that to white men? Black towns have been completely razed to the ground because of lying claims of some white women. So how can it be racist when one uh, acts on hateful actions based on nothing more but color and the other one hates because of the action of what the color subjug subjugating and violating the other one is doing. How is that how is that racism? You want us to be brother, brothers and, and sisters to that, singing Kumbaya and we shall overcome? You can overcome the size 11 boot in your backside. This is just fake and hypocritical. Talking about uh, because of the racism of white people, you know, if you hate them, now you're racist. You're, you don't know what you are talking about. You have no clue what you're saying. You wouldn't practice that yourself. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, you yourself, you contradict your own principles. Uh, where they're undermining other races, whether white people being racist against black people, or in many cases, in some cases, I would say, of course, it's more usually white against black, but in some cases, even black people being racist against white people as a retaliation for the races that they had to suffer, the races and they had to suffer, and both are wrong. We hate the action. We do not hate the actor, because the human can always make tawbah. Uh, but in some cases, even black people being racist against white people as a retaliation for the races that they had to suffer, the races and they had to suffer, and both are wrong. So you don't hate shaitan or iblis, you hate the act of arrogance that prevented him from prostrating to Adam. You don't hate Fir'aun, you hate the actions of Fir'aun. You don't hate Abu Lahab, you hate the actions of Abu Lahab. You don't hate every fasik out there, and Allah Azza wa Jal will not punish them in hellfire. Allah will punish their actions in hellfire, and they will keep them outside. But in some cases, even black people being racist against white people as a retaliation for the races that they had to suffer, the races and they had to suffer. As one someone said in the comment, let someone come, you know, if, if whoever says that, let someone come and, and smack you. Or as he said, let someone come and slap your mother. I want to I want to hear you say well I hate the action of I hate the action of slapping as for the guy Malish well like, this guy is just a walking contradiction hate the action not the actor unless you're a white supremacist unless you're a white racist can't hate that and look at the example he gave too as somebody came and slapped your mother what about somebody choking you out to death for eight minutes on camera? What about mass incarceration? What about slavery? What about redlining? What about being locked out of the, the capitalist system on purpose? What about taxing without representation? And on and on and on. So he's acting like, he's out here acting like that black people hate the existence of white people. Like, which is the opposite of what uh, what should we call it? What's actually the reality that's happening? It's white people who are hating the existence of black people so much so, so much so that they make programs to uh, you know wipe us off the map, like eugenics, like Planned Parenthood, like uh, putting guns into in the ghettos, like selling African countries weaponry so they can fight other Africans in Africa. Like mass mass vaccination, we we'll see what happened today with AIDS and whatnot. So he's saying he's basically saying, you know, if you hate white people because of this, that's racism. Nothing to do with oppression, nothing to do with that. 
How many a nation did Allah destroy in the Quran? And nobody can accuse Allah of being a racist. Nobody can charge Allah with, with uh, being a racist. You see, when oppression comes, you're supposed to hate the oppression. Here he comes, hate the sin, not the sinner is bottle, but you know, can't hate the racist though. Can't hate them. <laughs> what are you talking about? And that's why I keep telling you black people, I hope you don't mind me watch the talking to black people directly now. Yeah. Right? That's why I keep telling you, black people, you need to know who your enemies are. You need to know. These people who are making excuses for oppression and oppressors like that, they are not your brothers. And I'm not going to stop saying that. I'm not going to stop saying that. White supremacy is a system that has basically locked down all the countries on the planet. To call it out is not racism. To call it out is intelligence and standing up for justice. Don't let anybody confuse you and tell you that standing against white supremacy is racist. This is how this, this is how the system continuously gets perpetuated and stays in power because of people like Wajdi, who instead of attacking white supremacy, he attacks the people who white supremacy affects. Nobody says this about the Palestinians in Israel. In Israel, as a matter of fact. The Israelis, when a, when a Jew becomes a Muslim in Israel, and there is a, a, a movement now of Jewish people becoming Muslim in Israel and Palestine, a movement, okay? They have the good sense, those Jewish people have the good sense when they become Muslim, the first thing they do is to call out Zionism. Meanwhile, here in the West, you have Muslims who are outright openly standing up for white supremacy. Like open, like Daniel Hakichu, okay? You already, I, I, you can check my series, Pandering to White Supremacy. Check it out. 35% of the Muslims in this American election, 35%, okay, voted for Donald Trump. And I promise you, the bulk of those 45% are Easterners. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're talking about. So they stand up for white supremacy and then tell you, when you hate white supremacy, you're a racist. So let them continue pandering and standing up and uh, defending white supremacy, you let them continue doing that. Just cut them off. Cut them off. And when they ask you why you cut them off, you can show them one of these videos. You need to explain to me why when Jewish people become Muslim, they are quick to call out Zionism, but when white people become Muslim, they have the right to stand up for white supremacy and alt-right uh, talking points. You know what I'm saying? Like Daniel Hakikachu, what he said about Breonna Taylor and uh, the, what he called the protesters. It's all, it's, these are his exact words. Muslims singing the praises of Donald Trump. Now, black people, remember when I told you that you have too many enemies to be pandering and playing with them. You see these Muslims right here praying outside in the George Floyd. You'll notice a couple of things. They're all brown people, okay? Pakistanis and Arabs. These right here, these are your Muslim brothers right here. These ones right here who stand up for your life, that's your Muslim brothers. Those are your Muslim brothers and your Muslim sisters. These are the ones who will have your back when it comes down to it. These are the ones who do not make you feel guilty for being oppressed. These are the ones who you can say, you know, yes, we are truly brothers and sisters in Islam. 
in all my years being Muslim, I never seen uh, Easterners sp stand up specifically for black causes until the George Floyd. Those ones right there, those are the ones you consider your brothers and your sisters. Not these people out here like Wajdi telling you when you stand up for yourself, it's racism. And if you uh, hate your oppressor, it's racism. And if you, uh, you know, go out and George Floyd, it's racism, all this kind of nonsense. He doesn't apply the same principles uh, to himself. And at the same time, talking about hate the sin, not the sinner is bid'a. He will lie, he said that. He said there's a new bid'a. Well, lie, he said that. And at the same time, except when it comes to racism. Except when it comes to racism, no, you're supposed to love your oppressor. You're supposed to do that. Cheapening the religion. Just making up his own principles as he goes along. So those brothers and sisters who stand up for your causes, whether they're white, brown, it doesn't make a difference, Indonesian, Pakistani, those are your brothers and sisters. And when somebody is telling you, Oh, what about uh, Wala wa bara? What about Tawheed and Akid and all this kind of stuff? You know the devil. The devil likes to hide behind religion, and they'll hide behind religion and all these talking points, so that you they can oppress you. That's why I keep saying, don't get, don't fall for dogma. Don't do it. These dogmatic points. This is how they keep you oppressed. So they hide behind all this, you know, Akira and Tawheed, and we have to be united. They, that's, this, is their, this is their hiding spot. Meanwhile, who are, who are the ones who are oppressed? Who are the ones who are enslaving uh, black people up until this day? The same ones teaching you about Akira and Menhaj, the Arabs. All over the Arab world. Black people and, and uh, Bengalis and Sri Lankans or whatever. All the poorest people are being enslaved in the Arab world. Telling you that we should be united upon Akira. Were they uniting upon Akira when they're enslaving uh, black people? Y'all need to wake up and smell the roses. This is happening right now. Akita didn't save these black people from being enslaved by their, their brothers, their Arab brothers. And nobody wants to say it, and nobody wants to tell the truth about this. And guess what? The world is learning the truth, whether you want to or not, whether you want it to come out or not. The world is learning the truth. So you need to decide on which uh, side of history you want to be on. Me, I choose the truth. This is the truth. White supremacy is the most destructive, evil, wicked system that the world has ever seen. It's a theonic system. It's a system built upon extreme shirk, making people gods before, before men. They did it first with Christianity, and then they did it again with atheism, cutting out God altogether. All of it is white supremacy, all of it. All of it. LGBTQ, uh, whatchamacallit, feminism, it's all white supremacy. All these communism, capitalism. Why do you think all these African countries right now today are poor? It has to be white supremacy. They, they go into these, these African countries, sell these people weapons, get them fighting each other, and then tell them, oh, you're too, uh, you're, the reason why your country is poor is because you're not educated. At the same time, preventing them, uh, uh, which we'll call, aggressively preventing them from education and aggressively preventing all these countries from any type of food security. There's white supremacy, all of it. And when you speak against it, you're supposed to be racist. And this this idea of racism, let me tell you something about Wajji. Wajji, he throws this word out like it's nothing. Like it's just, Oh, you're a racist. Bilal, you're a racist. You're, you're a racist. I'm going to show you some stuff. Watch this. Like this one here. Little love from Michelle Love. Racist people calling innocent non-racist people racist. And this one where he addresses me directly. Besides being a despicable racist bigot. Oh, ha, ha. 
who in spite of me advising you and swearing by Allah in our private WhatsApp chat that I never had such racist notions as you claimed. You would ignore all this and continue to make these nasty videos, which included nakedness and music and all types of haram. We're going to get back to that part later, but basically the point is he's calling me a despicable racist bigot. So the point I want to make here is that he just kind of throws out racist like ra everybody's a racist it, according to him if you don't agree to him he's a racist my subscriber she's a racist okay uh malcolm x the fact that he said malcolm x is a racist that right there should give you the uh clue that you know maybe you shouldn't be taking any advice uh, uh from him about race at all and he's calling me a racist now we're gonna show everybody what a numbskull this guy is because i'm supposed to be a racist right I'm supposed to be a racist, right? Now watch. Now, as y'all can see, this is my channel that says Ramadan 2019 highlights. This time I had just moved to Ottawa. It's my first Ramadan in Ottawa. And I had gone to a master called Meshir Rahma the night before I did this little lecture here. And the brother you see standing beside me, he was raising money for Syria and he was having trouble doing it. So I asked him if I can help. So I picked up the mic and that night I raised tens of thousands of dollars. I can't remember exactly how much for Syria. And then he asked me to go around with him to different masajid so we can raise money. And I did this for two days and I can't remember exactly how much, but I want to say it's around the 50,000 range that I raised money for the Syrians, you know, for what they're going through. So you need to explain to me how this racist black man is raising money, tens of thousands of dollars for not only Arabs, not only for white people, but white Arabs. Why would a racist do something like that? Not only did I raise all that money for the Syrians, but I didn't ask for a single red cent. I just volunteered myself. Just like that. And the only thing I asked from the people was dua only. And the very definition of a racist is that they want to oppress the race that they hate, correct? So then why am I as a racist trying to help the race that I'm supposed to be oppressing? How does that work? You know, when people, they make these grandiose statements and it doesn't even like, it's kind of beneath you to make a response to those statements. That's like this right here. It's well and beneath me. But the reason why I'm responding to it is because I want to show you how idiotic this guy is. But wait, there's more. You guys remember the series I did the convert profiles with uh, the brother Muhammad Kifayat Allah? Around that time, the explosion happened in Lebanon. And look what your brother, as a racist, wrote. We ask Allah to aid the people of Lebanon and to increase them in patience and perseverance through this difficulty. Amin. Family, what country is this funny looking gremlin from? So here I am as a black man making dua and asking Allah to increase his people, the Lebanese people, in patience and perseverance for their fitna. And here he comes as a Lebanese per person telling black people, standing up for yourself is racism. You see the disconnect here? A Muslim is supposed to stand up against oppression. A Muslim is supposed to stand up against oppression and oppressors, not for them, not make the argument for them. You don't find anywhere in the Quran or the Sunnah where Allah or the Prophet ﷺ ever stood up for oppressors or oppressions, except when it comes to black people in 2020, this is what these people do. This is what these people do. So we, as black people, this is our habit. We always stand up against oppression no matter who is it, against, it is against. I blatantly made dua for his people and he blatantly speaks against our people. So I want to take you back to this 
comment where he accused me of being a racist bigot, a despicable racist bigot. Now, mind you, up until this very day, I never accused him of being a racist. I said that he used racist tropes, yes. This is a fact, as you already seen plainly. And he used more than one, more than one racist trope, popular racist tropes. But I never accused him of being racist. Like I said, it's not a small thing. It's not a light thing. Somebody can fall into racism, but not actually be a racist. You feel me? But he called me all kind of racist. He called my followers, my YouTube followers and my subscribers racist. He called Malcolm X a racist, but I never called him a racist, right? Go check all my videos, everything, all my comments, everything, right? I never accused him of being a racist. But anyway, I want to take you back to this comment where he says, uh, you would ignore all this and continue making these nasty videos which included nakedness music and all types of harm when the first time i read this i wasn't quite sure what he was talking about but i think he was talking about a specific clip that i put in the pandering to white supremacy series i think that's it either that sir yeah either that series or the shut up uh the Woji akari tragedy series i can't remember which one but it's a clip from a documentary called enslaved produced by Samuel L. Jackson, an amazing documentary, amazing, right? So I, I suggest everybody watch that. But I put this clip in to show people that, you know, where a white supremacy started in Spain, right? And how it started. And I'm, I think that's what he's talking about. I had to take that clip out because I got dinged for a copyright infringement. So I had to remove that clip to keep the video but I think it was either in that one of these series. Anyways, that's what he's talking about. But mind you, he said, I continue to make these nasty videos, which include nakedness, music, and all types of haram, right? Right? Bravo, Wajdi. Bravo, that level of hypocrisy is just mad. Deliciosa, bella. You know, bon appetita. That was just some beautiful hypocrisy right there, bro. What was that? So you remember my sins, but you can't even remember yours. You see, a brother, he sent me this video and I was like, I can't, I can't deal with this. This is dealing with somebody's personal sins, right? I don't, I don't want to have anything to do with that, right? And I'm, and he's telling me, no, just download it, download it. I said, okay, fine, I downloaded it, <laughs> right? But I, w I wasn't going to use that. This is what these spies like Troy and, and other, these, this is like FBI stuff, you know what I mean? Where people dig into your, your personal whatever right and then they put that out there right so this is like for spies and agents and stuff i don't want to deal with other people's sins or whatnot i don't i don't i don't i hate that stuff sometime after this brother sent me the video he he contacts me again he says uh the video got deleted i said what do you mean the video got deleted what do you mean what he means is that Somebody found out about the video, told Wajdi, and he deleted it. So he has no problem backbiting for two hours against Abu Toba. He has no problem talking all kinds of rancor against me. But when it comes to himself, he forgets his own self, calling me all kinds of this. But you know what, Wajdi? Besides being a despicable racist and bigot <laughs> you would ignore all of this and continue to make these nasty videos with nakedness and music and all types of haram wouldn't you you see as a westerner when you're working in the west you'll find yourself in all kinds of compromising positions when you're working out here because you're always mixing with people of the opposite sex and opposite gender and these idiots <laughs> right like uh troy and them and spubs and them or whatever they always try to dig up some sort of nefarious situation like this against other people and leverage against it against them 
knowing full and well that we're in the West, we'll always find ourselves in some sort of embarrassing situation, right? So for me now, I don't see using stuff like this as something good because we're Westerners. Unless you are a construction worker or you are a garbage man, you're always going to be working with the opposite sex. Always. So now, why did you put it out there? It's very simple. It's easy to see because this the level of arrogance this guy has. He's so incredibly arrogant. Imagine he's telling me about a piece of a documentary that I put with music and uh, this woman, uh, some Spanish woman. But look what look what he's doing. Look what he's doing. So when you want to expose the sins of other people, it's eventually it's going to come back on you. This is who this guy is. I kept telling you from before <laughs> that this is some uh, what you call it. Uh, third wave of hypocrisy dawa. You all thought I was crazy. Yeah, I'm not crazy. I know what I'm talking about. Look what he says here. If only your fellow decent African brothers would shove a sock down your throat, it would be great for you, Allah. Black people, what do you think about that? Don't you let what you know what you think about that? So in other words, the African brothers who agree with me, they can't be decent, right? No, there's, there's no racism here at all. <laughs> and this one here too. You also have the nerve to ask people for money so they can support this useless rubbish you are putting out. <laughs> what else he say? He said, have a little shame, man. Stop asking people for money and begging. Get a job and fund yourself. Black people, what do you think about that? What do you think about that, black people? You know this thing with Patreon that I keep asking the people to support? You know who told me about that and said I should do it? Wallahi, 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 it was Sajid Lipham. Wallahi, he told me about it. And you know what I told him at that time when he told me? I said I don't feel comfortable taking money for it. I know it's a lot of work. I know I do a lot of work to put in these videos, but I just feel antsy about it. And you know why I started asking for money for these videos? You know why? Because I, my channel didn't get shut down once. It got shut down twice. Twice a, my channel got shut down. How many of my videos have been blocked from these people that I speak about? The second time it was shut down for two months. So I said, you know what? Let me ask the people to support the channel because it's worth it. Who suggested to me? Sajid. He never asked this question to Sajid. He never asked Sajid, well, why are you asking people for money? Why do you think he asked me about that? Is it just simply because I'm putting him out there? No, it's because he sees this. Well, why don't you get a job and go to work? No, who had me a job this morning? Where? I went down to the post office and said that man, could he let me have one of them jobs as a letter to him? You see, black people, I'm out here defending you all the time. And he doesn't want you to support the channel that defends you. He wants you to support him and his, his people. And what do you call that in Islam? When people see you have something, they don't want it for you. They just want it for themselves. What do you call that? What do you call that in Arabic? What's the Arabic word? When you see people have something, you want it for yourself, but you don't want it for them. It's hasad, right? It's hasad. I wouldn't, I can't even think, right? In my, my mind, for example, even Sajid, I can't tell people not to support Sajid. I can't do that, regardless of a disagreement that we're having. I can't, me personally, I can't do that. I can't go on Saj's channel and try to sabotage his channel like he tried to sabotage mine. That doesn't even come in my head like that. Because you're talking about Muslims here. 
But here he comes asking that good, decent African brother to shove a sock down my throat and telling you people not to support this channel. What do you think about that, black people? What do you think? What do you think about that, all you Muslims who are really against oppression? What do you think about that? Because I don't deserve your support for these videos that I make, as he put it. Telling me I don't even deserve even followers. At that time, I had 950. When these guys came and they sabotaged my, my channel, I had like 960 something. It went down to like 940. Right now it's up to 980 again. Alhamdulillah, that was like two months ago. You think I, I could care less about some moisture when they hear the truth, they leave the channel. That's why I keep telling you I'm not like a, a youth. I don't consider myself a YouTuber. I might be on YouTube, but I'm not a YouTuber because I'm speaking too much truth here. I could do what these guys do. I can go with the flow. I can, you know, do these analytics and stuff like that. I'd rather just keep my integrity intact. So when you're supporting this channel, you know you're supporting somebody who's not going to lie to you. And even if I'm mistaken, I'm humble enough to admit my mistakes. And I've done it several times on this channel. Where this guy, he displays the most arrogance. The most. And the racism on top of that. You thought it was a joke that there were, you know, there were, the people that you love were not racist. It's not a joke, man. Anybody who puts their trust of their religion into YouTubers, really, they don't have any respect for the religion of all. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. You, when you start leaving the ulama for people like this, treacherous people, the most treacherous people, people that you don't know, you don't have a relationship with. You just see them on the screen. These are the people you're going to trust with your religion, with your religion. This is cheap. You make the religion very cheap. I'm out here telling you to listen to Sheikh Al-Bani and Sheikh Al-Bez and Sheikh Al-Bani, these type of people, if you want to get religion. Listen to people who actually studied for decades at a time, like uh, Sheikh Abu Toba, Sheikh... Uh, Tahir, uh, Mufti Munir. Listen to those type of people. Anyway, I came to you in peace. I leave you in peace. Yeah, support me on Patreon. Now will you support me on Patreon? Now will you do it? We'll see what happens now. We'll see if you support me on Patreon. Support me on Patreon. Uh, you know, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. All you people who are going to dislike and unsubscribe from the, the my channel because of this video sayonara bye <laughs> subhana kolabi hamdik rashari ala ant astaghfiruka wa tubi like i came to you in peace i leave you in peace assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh do you hate all white people i don't think it's a fair question uh my edit the white my edit the white man doesn't even come into my attitude uh he mr muhammad teaches us to love our own kind and let the white man take care of himself. For a white man today, sir, after uh, kidnapping millions of black people from Africa, stripping them of all human characteristics and relegating them to the role of chattel or cattle or animals, commodity, merchandise that could be bought and sold at will, uh, and then a hundred years since the Emancipation Pro Proclamation, using every type of deceptive method to further us into slavery, uh, called second-class citizenship, I think that it would take a whole lot of nerve for white people today to ask Negroes, do they hate them? Okay.